Let's paint a collie, and we're going to use color dabs in order to do this. This is all about value. Let's get started. All right, getting ready for an online workshop where I'm going to need to do this live. So I'm going to be practicing quite a few of these in the coming days. And what it is is just color value dabs that I make in columns. I make a dark column, a medium column, and a light column. And then I look at my photograph and I determine where my darks are, where my mediums are, and where my lights are. And then I mix for color. So I'll have different colors happening. I'm going to plug those into the mass. And the mass is the actual value shapes. So that's kind of what I do. I also want to use as few strokes as possible. And I want to use a limited palette. So I'm going to continue to paint. I've only picked maybe three or four colors and I'm going to use those same colors throughout. I'm making all my mixes. Nothing comes directly from the paint tube. And that's because things look more integrated. Whoops, I don't know what happened there. Things look more integrated if you have a limited palette and you mix your colors from the palette. I also, would, would, so that's a long way of saying that when I get to the greens in the background, there's going to be an awful lot of these of burnt sienna and quinacridone gold in those greens. And if I didn't do that, then um, then my collie would end up look, not looking like he was anchored in. It would look like he had been pasted in place. But that's what I'm going to do last. And I'm, and I'm also editing the photograph. The photograph is actually quite light. But uh, I decided that I'm going to push the value a little bit. So what, even though some of those places read as being light or almost white, I'm going to add color to them. But I'm going to be kind of true to the color of a collie. I'm not matching the photograph. I'm not a matchy-matchy painter, but I do match value. But in order to achieve that value, I'm going to mis mix quite a few colors in order to get there. So again, like I said, mass for value. I'm going to mix a lot of colors, and I'm going to plug those colors into the masses. And that's what's happening here. Now, in this case, I'm working from my darks to my lights. You can see the dark column is on the far right, and now most of the painting is in the mediums. And can see all those various kind of colors that I've mixed up. Now this is the first time I've entered something into the, the light column. So, and, and you did see that um, that red value finder showed up because that helps me, um, it helps me determine value relative from one color relative to another. And really what I'm doing is one column relative to another. So I needed to make sure that that uh, light value dab, no matter what I did, that that light value dab was not going to, was that you could hardly see it through the value finder. And when we get to the end of the painting, I'll show you what, what I mean by that. We're going to look through the value finder at all the dabs and see whether I was accurate or not. And uh, I am pretty accurate for this, so I'm, I'm pretty confident. I'm also putting a neutral in right now. A neutral, as you probably know, is a color that really has no name. They end up being beige or gray. I think it's really important to have some neutrals in a painting. If everything is color, then in a sense, nothing is color. So I need a few neutrals. And that's kind of what I will use if I'm absolutely not sure at all what a color is. I might decide to insert a neutral in there. It's a little bit of a placeholder. Oh, I'm also using as few strokes as possible. This is Arsh cold press paper, uh, 140 pound. The brush, I think, is a number. I'm going to guess it's a 16. Um, and then in my final pass, I think I come back with a 14. My final pass is always just a few strokes, though. I almost do nothing with any. Well, almost the smallest brush I ever use is a 16. And lately, I've been using a 20. But that's on a bigger piece of paper for the most part. Now, looking at the value dabs, you can see there's starting to be quite a few. And there's still more to come. So now I'm going to get busy on the background. Now, like I said, I'm going to, I am using a lot of burnt sienna, quinacridone gold, probably even some alizarin crimson in, the, in those greens as well. That's going to be really important because it needs to integrate with the collie in front. But I'm also going to make it quite abstract because, you know, whenever you're painting something, you kind of have to decide what where you want your your interests to lie. And for me, I wanted it to be on this collie. And the reason for picking this collie was because he just looks so relaxed. He kind of looked like he had no bones in him. And I, I, I love a sleeping dog. You know, there's something very relaxing about seeing a sleeping dog. So as you can see from this, I'm not as interested in the background. And if I gave the background equal attention that I gave to the dog, then um, you get kind of confused about where where the artist wants you to look. But I framed them in pretty well. Um, you know, it's always real important to me, anyway, to have 
um, whatever subject I have going a little bit off the paper, so it's not an island surrounded by oceans. There also was a little bit of sunlight happening. I don't know if it was sunlight or just the grass was lighter, and I wanted to um, emphasize that in front. That's a little push of color, just because otherwise everything would be quite dull, but it also caught my interest. I tend to look at things that uh, catch my interest from the initial photograph, and then when I go to paint it, I want to make sure that I emphasize those things. I think that's kind of an artist's prerogative. Because just making it look like the photograph sort of doesn't accomplish very much, in, in my mind anyway. I, I, I feel like um, I want to interpret, I want to show what was important to me. It's sort of like leaving an opinion behind, maybe, or something like that. I may be thinking about it too much, I don't know. Um, now I'm coming back with some, um, what I think of as my, my final my final pass, which is a smaller brush and a, little, and a few darks, but very few, very few. This is a very limited thing that I do because I don't want it to be tight. I want it to have, like I said, as few strokes as possible. And in just a second, we're going to look through the value finder to see if I was accurate or not. And I think I'm going to be. I wish this was a game show on TV because I think I would do really well on it. I can't answer any questions on Jeopardy, but I think if it was a color value, if it was a show about color value, I think I could walk away with the, I think I could get maybe a few thousand dollars out of that, but uh, there'll never be a game show on TV having to do with color discrimination and artists, that's for sure. So, all right, here's the value finder, and we look through it, and you can see the dark show up quite nicely on the right. See how the mediums are just slightly dark, uh, slightly lighter than those darks, and the lights disappear entirely. So I feel like when I've done that, I've kind of nailed it. That was what I wanted to do, and that's what's going to happen throughout the painting. And that's going to match the value structure and map that the original picture was. And if I can do that, then I, I always feel like I'm pretty successful for the day. And that's all I'm looking for, to feel like I did a good job for today. And I say, good job. You can see light, medium, dark on those columns there. There's the painting, so you can get a kind of a sense of how, how large it is. It's not very large, just kind of a size that's fun to do on a Sunday afternoon. And then, um, let's see what's coming up here. I might have, oh, just a little closer. It's funny how different the light is when you go a little bit closer. He seems to have a little bit of a golden glow to him, which I really like. And right now I'm just thinking about collies a lot. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color, which is what we did here. That's what the painting really looks like. And um, please join my YouTube channel and leave a comment below if you would, which would be really helpful. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.